part of the big health care reform debate that's going on in the United States right now relates to how do we spend the money on health care. And it boils down to where do you get your biggest bang for the buck? Because sooner or later, we have to deal with the question of rationing. And rationing means somebody who could receive care and potentially benefit from it doesn't get it because you've decided to spend those dollars elsewhere where you're going to get a bigger bang for your buck. So when we talk about people like Charlie Flynn, the question is, can you get any bang for your buck operating on somebody who's 83 years old? I was born and raised on a farm and uh, I was healthy from the very beginning. And I just kept staying that way. I took good care of myself. So Charlie Flynn brings up some interesting issues because when he first presented to a doctor a little over two years ago, when he's 81 years old, he had obvious aortic stenosis and new atrial fibrillation, which we know is going to lead to heart failure. And after his conversation with his doctor, they decided that he was too old to have aggressive invasive treatment. This turned out to be very unexpected. Uh, I think the last couple of years he's slowly been kind of going downhill a little bit. He shows up two years later in profound congestive heart failure, and now, whereas before he was too old, now he's too sick to be ignored. We had no idea we were going to end up with major surgery. We just thought it was a simple heart fibrillation that could be easily corrected, which turned out it wasn't. A evaluation of what was his functional status beforehand, what are his social circumstances, how good is his brain functioning, so a lot of um, decision-making goes into the process of whether we're going to do heart surgery. I think that what a palliative medicine physician would do, and any physician would do, would be to do a complete history, a complete physical exam, and review of any pertinent laboratory data or scans that are used and that what they try to do is number one I think assess what is the symptom burden that the patient has. What are the physical symptoms that the patient is suffering from from their disease. In addition they also look at other dimensions of care, the psychological impact of their disease as well as what how that affects their family and this affects their meaning in their life. He just can't stop now you know other than this he's been healthy and um, he has so many children and grandchildren we're all alive and care about him and he, I just feel there's no choice but to go ahead with this surgery. In discussing the risks of surgery and accepting to go ahead with surgery, they're not afraid of dying. They're afraid of being debilitated and dependent on people, their families or in a nursing home. That's their fear. It seems they're accepting if the outcome, if I should die, that's okay, but they don't want to be dependent on anyone. Obviously the cheapest way is to just let people die. Um, there are some who are treatment nihilists, if you will, and say, well, once you get past a certain age, then we simply shouldn't offer the treatment. I think that's ageism, that, that's a prejudice based on your chronological age. I think most physicians feel that the number is not important, but the sort of physiologic and mental age of the patient is more important. I don't feel it's the doctor's place to, uh, to feel that way. It's up to the individual patient and the family. They know whether it's time to give up or time to keep going. Most old folks or past the age of 80 want to have the decision. They feel that they're still autonomous, they want to have a say. Most of them want to be treated, they want to be hospitalized and at least explore the treatment. Um, unfortunately, they often lose that right to speak for themselves once they get in the hospital because again, um, others are practicing paternalism, either the doctors or their family, and said, we're going to make the decision for you. Um, when old people learn about end of life or um, do not resuscitate and they understand what that means, they, they often choose that because they don't want to be a burden. 
And I've had many conversations with many old folks about whether we should go ahead with heart surgery. And by and large, their attitude is, if I die, fine. If you can restore me to good health, that's great. But I don't want to wind up in between. I don't want to wind up an invalid in an institution. I don't want to be a burden on my family or others. I may not decide if it was my family member that it's a good idea, but it's not for me to go through or to decide. But if they decide to do it, then it's okay. It's it's very personal decision. You know, when there's a possibility to to live longer and to to just live, uh, you just take it. You know, and uh, you know if if. Uh, you know, it works out, you know, that's, that's just his will and it's great, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, we don't want to leave here, leave here any sooner than we have. And I think, I think he's grown to love, you know, loves his wife and, and, and loves the, the kids and stuff and loves, uh, loves being, like he said, in his house and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I just, I just definitely think it's the best thing. Uh, you know, I don't think a doctor should decide. I think, you know, again, everybody is different. It was a long surgery, it was very extensive and uh, could see a difference each day and now definitely he is much, much better. He's, he's more alert, he's walking, he's breathing good, he's giving me a hard time at times. Is that a sign? <laughs> That's a good better? sign. <laughs> Going into the surgery, was there a comprehensive assessment, not only of um, this gentleman's goals, um, what he hoped to accomplish from the surgery, but also an evaluation of what would happen if the surgery did not go well. He was lucky to some extent from the skill of his surgeons, from his own uh, health that he was able to do well. And yet there was, I would suspect, a fairly high poss probability that something could have gone wrong. The, the solution to the healthcare financial crisis is to eliminate as much unnecessary care as possible. The government always focuses on waste, fraud, and abuse. Those of us who work in healthcare know that there's plenty of um, extra care taking place, which may not add value. That means may not enhance a patient's ability to enjoy life. So I understand the sentiment that at some point, on older folks, you have to draw the line. And that's why I feel it's such a tricky decision at times. And I also, that's why I feel Charlie Flynn was a good example, because he was almost on that borderline of being too old and too sick to really enjoy the benefit of open heart surgery. So we're going to see how it turns out. At this point, I've got to say yes. It was really worth it. Uh, the surgeon's done a terrific job, and I'm, I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> Thank you.